Please join in our opening hymn, number 203, Praise to the Lord, number 203. Praise to the Lord, the Almighty, the King of creation. Oh, my soul, praise him, for he is your help, salvation. begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. Amen. My brothers and sisters, as we join together this morning, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mystery. That I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord have, mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, who govern all things both in heaven and on earth, mercifully hear the pleading of your people and bestow your peace on our times. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the first book of Samuel. Samuel said to Saul, Stop, let me tell you what the Lord said to me last night. Saul replied, Speak. Samuel then said, Though little in your own esteem, are you not leader of the tribes of Israel? The Lord anointed you king of Israel and sent you on a mission, saying, Go and put the sinful Amalekites under a ban of destruction. Fight against them until you have exterminated them. Why then have you disobeyed the Lord? You have pounced on the spoil, thus displeasing the Lord. Saul answered Samuel, I did indeed obey the Lord and fulfill the mission on which the Lord sent me. I have brought back Agag, and I have destroyed Amalek under the ban. But from the spoil, the men took sheep and oxen, the best of what had been banned to sacrifice to the Lord their God in Gilgal. But Samuel said, Does the Lord so delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices as in obedience to the command of the Lord? Obedience is better than sacrifice, and submission than the fat of rams. For a sin like divination is rebellion, and presumption is the crime of idolatry. Because you have rejected the command of the Lord, he too has rejected you as ruler. The word of the Lord. Be to, God. to the upright I will show the saving power of God. To the upright I will show the saving power of God. Not for your sacrifices do I rebuke you, for your burnt offerings are before me always. I take from your house no bullock, no goats out of your fold. To the upright, I will show the saving power of God. Why do you recite my statutes and profess my covenant with your mouth, 
though you hate discipline and cast my words behind you. To the upright, I will show the saving power of God. When you do these things, shall, shall I be deaf to it? Or do you think that I am like yourself? I will correct you by drawing them up before your eyes. He that offers praise as a sacrifice glorifies me. And to him that goes the right way, I will show the salvation of God. To the upright, I will show the saving power of God. living and effective, able to discern reflections and thoughts of the heart. Alleluia. 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 The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Disciples of John and of the Pharisees were accustomed to fast. People came to Jesus and objected. Why do the disciples of John and the disciples of the Pharisees fast, but your disciples do not fast? Jesus answered them, Can the wedding guests fast while the bridegroom is with them? As long as they have the bridegroom with them, they cannot fast. But the days will come. When the bridegroom is taken from them, taken away from them, and then they will fast on that day. No one sews a piece of unshrunken cloth on an old garment, on an old cloak. If he does, its fullness pulls away, the new from the old, and the tear gets worse. Likewise, no one pours new wine into old wineskins. Otherwise, the wine will burst the skins. Both the wine and the skins are ruined. Rather, new wine is poured into fresh wineskins. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord Jesus Christ. You ever not follow a prompting of our Lord? You get that little interior inspiration, he's trying to wake you up, say something. And you go, uh, no, just me? Okay, see a couple of people. You're all, you're all waking up. And I thought I was like a little bit slow this morning, right? It happens. It happens. But yet, the Lord, especially when it comes to the big things, he wants us to be obedient to the promptings of the heart because he's trying to guide us. He's trying to lead us. And lay, us, lay out that path for us to follow so that we do what he is asking. You have that happening in that first reading where, you know, Samuel has to come to Saul and go, Hey, what are you doing? You, know, you were supposed to kind of do all these things, but you're not supposed to kind of take all these fruits of the land and everything else. And the whole thing comes down to all of a sudden, like Saul's like, Well, you know, hey, they took a couple of things for sacrifice. That should be okay, right? It's like, no, the obedience to what the Lord's asking is more. And he talks about those sins of presumption, right? Presuming, like, you know, the biggest way we could fall into presumption nowadays is to presume upon usually God's mercy. Where we kind of fall into that trap of saying, well, you know, I did these things, but God will forgive me, right? He's merciful, right? Well, yes, but he's also just, right? Right? 
we cannot separate all these attributes of out from God and just kind of turn them into what we would call this two-dimensional character. God is fully, again, this divine person. Actually, when we talk about the Trinity, we're talking about a few, uh, those, that gift of three and one, right? Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And what happens is, is that sometimes in our hubris, we start to kind of rewrite the rules according to what we would like them to be. We start to kind of take on that ability of the knowledge of good and evil and say, I will be the arbiter of it. Well, friends, it doesn't work. As a matter of fact, it leads us in pathways that take us away from where God wishes us to be. And that is the big battle that we all face. That attempt to not fall in to that primordial sin of pride. Because all of us have that ability to start to kind of rewrite everything according to our own will, don't we? Kind of give in to this like delusion that we were like, oh, this is fine, right? I can, you know, this will be fine. We're very good at rationalizing. We're very good at rationalizing. Or to say it another way, as a friend of mine says, we have an infinite capacity for self-deception. We can very, very easily start to fall into this trap of saying, I'm going to do it my way. I'm going to do it on my own. I'm going to kind of just, you know, take two out of three of the things God's asking me to do. But that third one, well, I don't want to upset these people over here. So we're going to just let it ride. Well, the Lord, look what the response was. The Lord's like, Saul, you're not doing what I asked you. And it's like, because of this, like, <laughs> we're handing the kingdom on. And that's where, uh, very shortly, a young man named David will enter into this picture. You and I, dear friends, as we make our way through our daily lives, the Lord's asking us to follow those promptings of the heart. But do we know his voice when we hear it? Are we accustomed to listening to his voice? If not... One of the things that are, is very helpful to figuring out who's talking to us is going to those rules of discernment that St. Ignatius talks about, particularly the first two. Because I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go out on a limb here. You ready? I'm going to assume, since you're here at Daily Mass this morning, that you are trying to make your way towards God and rise from good to better in his service. Fair? Okay, great. We're on the same page. That means that the second rule of St. Ignatius applies. And what that rule talks about is that when we're trying to rise from good to better in his service, that the Lord's going to act one way and the enemy's going to act another. The enemy, he says, will bite and disquiet with false reasons, put up obstacles in our path so we may not go forward. Various things along these lines. When those things start happening, or all of a sudden you start to get in your heart this little thing of, you know you're no good, right? You know you did all this, right? All these things. Hmm, gee, what does that sound like? Sounds like somebody's accusing me. Where have I heard that title before? Because the enemy has the title of the accuser, right? Whereas the Lord is going to be giving us joys and consolations, the good kind of tears, right? All of these things, removing obstacles, giving us that peace, that quiet, so that we may go forward in service of him. When we start to tune into this reality, when these movements of the heart happen, we can start to understand who is it that's talking to us? Who is it that's trying to kind of lead us? Is it the enemy or is it God above trying to beckon us onward? If it's the enemy... St. Ignatius says, once we come to understand it's the enemy, after being aware of what's moving in here, we reject him. We push away. But if we start to be aware and understand that it's the Lord talking, moving in our heart, well, we want to follow that. We want to follow that wherever it leads. Two more things I think that'll help this morning before we wrap up. Ignatius, Father Timothy Gallagher, a.k.a. Wicked Smile. 
for those of you who know, he kind of has written all about St. Ignatius' rules in all these different ways. Very, very smart guy. Not too long ago when I got to kind of take a week-long class with him, which was very, very interesting stuff for me, just because I thought I knew some things. I don't know much. He said that two rules of Ignatius, aside from the, two, the ones that I mentioned, will help save you a lot of trouble. First is the fifth rule. Don't make a decision when you're in the middle of bad desolation. Because guess whose voice is most prominent? The guy down below. Don't make a decision until you come out of that. And the th 13th rule is the other one. When in kind of going through these trials, bring it to the light, to a trusted spiritual person who can speak into it and knows the ways of like kind of the movements of the heart, who can look and go, well, that ain't right. Or that's not from God. Or this thing over here is from God, but that's not. Because when it's brought to the light, it loses its power over us. We stay obedient to those two rules, he said. You're going to save a lot of heartbreak in your life and a lot of crazy twists and turns that the Lord doesn't want us to take. All of it comes down to being faithful to the call of the Lord. Because if we live that out, dear friends, that's where we'll find our peace and our joy, even in the midst of our trials. He will lead us, he will guide us, and he will strengthen us along the path he's traced for us in this life. So with that in mind, we commend ourselves to our Lord through the intercession of our Blessed Mother Mary and all the saints in heaven, most especially St. Ignatius this morning, asking for every gift and grace and heavenly blessing. Trusting in our Lord and Savior, let us lift our prayers before him this day. For those who hunger and thirst, especially in these winter months, we pray to the Lord. Lord hear our For us, your faithful, for when, when we fail to follow your statutes and promptings, we pray to the Lord. Lord hear our for those who are afraid and for those who do not feel safe, may the Holy Spirit protect them. As their neighbors seek to help them, we pray to the Lord. Lord hear our for the sick and suffering in this world, especially those for those in conflict-ridden nations, we pray to the Lord. Lord hear our for those who have died, may they delight in the law of the Lord and the land of the living, we pray to the Lord. Lord hear our as, we as we lift up Patricia Markowitz in the prayer of this liturgy, let us also offer up our own prayers to the Lord in the silence of our own hearts. We pray to the Lord. Lord Good and gracious God, invigorate our hearts with the gift of your grace, that we may follow your holy prompting and be led to the places you wish us to serve you as you desire in all things. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, who have become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, who will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Grant us, O Lord, we pray, that we may participate worthily in these mysteries. For where, whenever the memorial of this sacrifice is celebrated, the work of our redemption is accomplished. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right and just. it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord, His death we celebrate in love, His resurrection we confess with living faith, and His coming in glory we await with unwavering hope. And so with all the angels and saints, we praise you, as without end, we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
the mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life, the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope and Robert our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them in to the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, of the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God. With blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and form by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and saved from all distress, as we await the blessed hope, the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will. We live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer one another a sign of peace. On you stay. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
the communion antiphon. You have prepared a table before me, and how precious is the chalice that quenches my thirst. And now for the prayer of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, unite myself wholly to you, never permit me to be separated from you. Let us pray. Pour on us, O Lord, the spirit of your love, and in your kindness make those you have nourished by this one heavenly bread, one in mind and heart, through Christ our Lord. Amen. St. Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. Do thou, Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, 
cast into hell Satan, and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. The Lord be with you. And May Almighty God bless you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thank you, God. Have a great day.